Hey folks, B59 here. Welcome back to my Pisaw Transport playthrough of Transport Fever 2. This is episode 6 and it is a milestone episode for me. I um, recorded the first five episodes before publishing anything on YouTube because I wanted to kind of see how it turned out, whether it was something that I'd be interested in watching. And um, I thought it turned out okay, I liked it. And I started to really get into the series, so I did go ahead and publish those five episodes. But now I am essentially live with episode six. So this is being recorded on April 18th, and it will likely be published on April 19th. So I hope to see folks commenting and get your thoughts on the series and suggestions. I know that I'm not the best player. Um, but we'll get there. The other thing that I was thinking about is that this this series has also prompted me to go back and and read again um, Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain. And if anybody is really interested in getting a flavor of what life was like on the Mississippi back in 1850 and having it all told in a very humorous and excellent way, I can't recommend uh, that book enough. It, he starts off with a discussion about the kind of European discovery of the Mississippi River and then uh, talks about, he, he grew up on in, in the little village of Hannibal on the Mississippi River and uh, all he wanted to do was be a steamboatman and he became one. He became a river pilot and uh, up until the beginning of the Civil War he he, he worked as a pilot on these steamboats. Um, he describes his love for it as a child in, in this passage. When I was a boy, there was but one permanent ambition among my comrades in our village on the west bank of the Mississippi River. That was to be a steamboatman. We had transient ambitions of other sorts, but they were only transient. When a circus came and went, it left us all burning to become clowns. The first Negro minstrel show that came to our section left us all suffering to try that kind of life. Now and then we had a hope that if we lived and were good, God would permit us to be pirates. These ambitions faded out each in its turn, but the ambition to be a steamboatman always remained. Once a day, a cheap gaudy packet arrived upward from St. Louis and another downward from Keokuk. Before these events, the day was glorious with expectancy. After them, the day was a dead and empty thing. Anyway, it's a, it's a great book. It tells the story of what it was like to learn to be a pilot on the Mississippi and really brings home uh, how challenging this was. The river was narrow, it was shallow, it had full of sandbars and snags and was constantly shifting and it looked different in day and night. Anyway, it's a great story. And then he comes back in the early 1880s after the Civil War and takes a trip from St. Louis to New Orleans. And uh, on that, he also describes that trip and, and kind of the differences he saw in the river then. Steamboats were being eclipsed by rail at that point. Uh, there was a lot of observations he made on people's uh, reactions to the Civil War. Quite an, quite an interesting book. But, you know, enough with the literature. We've got to get down to making Pi Saw Transport rich. And what we're doing today, and, and here you see we're coming into Springfield. In the last episode, we completed our St. Louis to Chicago passenger ferry network. And now we're going to extend uh, downriver from St. Louis. Um, we're also going to start to, I, well, I think it's time to explore the Ohio River. And I was looking at the map and thinking about the history of this period. And, and when you look at this map, this is the Ohio River. It comes down from Cincinnati. The Kentucky River flows in here past Lexington. Goes past Louisville, Evansville, and then empties into the Mississippi River here at, um, actually that's Cairo, town of Cairo, right here where they meet. Uh, but that's not on this map, but we do see Cape Girardeau, and that's what we'll use as our hub 
for traffic coming off of the Ohio. The um, What's interesting here is that Ohio was really a major river for transport. Um, it connected to Pittsburgh and really all of the East Coast. And uh, and that's, that's how goods came back and forth, really, between the East Coast and uh, the Midwest. It was a major, major uh, river transport. So we're going to build that out today. And uh, we'll build out a passenger service, and, and uh, we'll see how much further we get. But I, I think we are going to also take up this cargo service that I had talked about in one of the earlier episodes. But let's get to it. So our first decision really is, how are we, what are we going to do about our uh, boat harbors in Cape Girardeau and Memphis? Um, we kind of have two choices. We can either build out a second boat harbor for passengers, or we can expand our existing harbors. I think, you know, if I were doing this again, I might put this harbor in a different location. This wouldn't be bad over here. It provides more, it's lower to the water and kind of provides a more gradual get up to the main road. And it's tempting to think about putting the passenger harbor right here. And in, in fact, I think that is what I'm gonna do. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And so let's, let's get it in. We have, uh, we still have some money, and maybe before we go, we should take a quick look just to see you know, how much money we're making. Um, we're doing pretty well. We made uh, almost 1.4 million last year with our uh, river transport finally starting to come onto its own. And a lot of that really is coming out of our uh, passenger service between St. Louis and Chicago. Anyway, back to actually building our transport network. If I don't, it'll never get done. So we've got a passenger harbor here. And uh, I think we'll place it right here. And then let's get our roads in. And I think right now we'll just use, you know, let's go ahead and get the medium street in here. It's not gonna be that much more. Ooh, these trees, on top of everything else, we've got trees making this life hard. <laughs> I wanna get this as close as I can so that we don't have a lip here. And that's pretty good. I wonder if I can get it. It doesn't want to really. There we go. Whew. Easier said than done. And I think we might want to try to come off right about here. Uh, no, that's too sweet. What happens if we come up to here? Lordy, okay. Uh, pretty steep, but I think that'll be fine. And uh, we will also put in a uh, bus stop here. And uh, I think for now, maybe right here. 
we'll get us out of all of town and for now I think that'll be fine <clears throat> and why don't we go ahead and set up the line now as well this will be our usual purple and it will just run from here to here bus Cape Girardeau ferry And I think we should go, well, let's go ahead and get our uh, vehicles in before we forget about them. And we'll just buy two to start. And we'll get them on our new bus line. And then down here in Memphis, we have the same issue. Man, it's tempting to put it right here, right in the middle of town. You know what, if we do a, one of those peculiar docks, it might make it a little bit more, e a little bit easier to do. So let's, let's try that here. When I say peculiar, I mean peculiar construction. See, see it sticks out pretty far and if we put it all the way back, it's just gonna be right up against uh, those places. So we can, what we can do instead, have it out here again go into configure mode set down a small dock here and one here get out our bulldozer take those out and then Take those out and voila. Huh. Oh, I forgot to put the landing in. I'm not sure I left myself enough room. Eh. <clears throat> okay, I think what we'll do is we'll just put another dock there. So we'll have a nice big wide dock. Won't hold any more people. But at least. Still outside of navigable water. Okay, now we're gonna get out the terrain generator, our flatten tool, and uh, bring it up to and we'll push. Let's see if that uh left us enough room. Ah, oh, still. Let me just take a peek and see what... I'm not quite sure what it's complaining about there, but we're gonna just go back at it with a little bit more flattening. And we can get this working. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're set up from that perspective. I, I will smooth this out a, a little bit just to take some of the fuzzies off. And then we need a road in here. Probably try to come up something like that. Um, not a trail track. Okay. There we go. Yeah, we're going to lose a couple of houses there. They are smaller ones. Let's get our road here in front of the, try to get a little closer. 
There we go. Uh, let's put some. Uh, let's put some curve in it. Doesn't have enough road there, or enough land, so let's uh, put some of this land back in. Uh, is that going to do it for us now? Yeah. Okay, you know, I think that's a better placement. We'll see. We'll see. You know, conceivably, we could even run it around up to here. Maybe bring a little bit of land out. I wonder what that would look like. I know it won't let me do it there, but uh, interesting. Very interesting. <clears throat> that would be nice because it would let us... Uh, Get to either part of town real easily. And we could do it by bringing out the land here a bit. road in first maybe all right and can we connect here right. oh <laughs> city uh and now I think what I'll do is bring this down that looks pretty good and I think I'll just give it up a little bit there we go Okay. Ah, uh, I'm sure that's overkill in 1869, but uh, anyway, that's what we've got. So we're gonna get a bus stop here. Oh. How about a passenger bus stop? And then I think we want one here. And we want one. Want one here. Actually, is this one? It's not catching all of the folks over there to the uh, downriver side. <clears throat> so I think what we might do is have this one go around. And we'll put one more stop in the south end of town. Let's see, this is on this side. So if we come like this, we'll want the stop on uh, the east side of the street. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we will add, first of all, our... Northern line. And these are all going to be purple. They're all bus. They're both uh, ferry routes. And we're in Memphis. Ferry, ferry north. And then we'll have another one that runs from... 
here to here. Actually, before we put this in, I'm going to put a another stop on the other side of the street just in case that's a more convenient way for this to run. And now we'll uh, create this. Let's see. This station. Actually, I'm going to make it a different color so I can make sure I understand what route it's following. It's going to go around like that. Oh, I see. Okay, that'll work. And we'll call this bus. Memphis Ferry South. Okay, and now let's get a couple of vehicles on each of the uh, each of those routes. So we'll put two on North and the rest on Memphis Ferry South. All right. Now we need our boats and actually a new um, a new ferry service from uh, St. Louis. Now I think this is when I'm going to want to change up the terminals here, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is currently our line up to uh, up the Illinois to Chicago is on this uh, spot here, but I think we want to reserve that and for this uh, ferry going down to Cape Girardeau in Memphis. So we're gonna move this to Terminal 2. And now uh, the Illinois River boat will come in here. And we'll also create a line that goes from St. Louis to Cape Girardeau. to Memphis and then back to Cape Girardeau. Um, still blue? You know, uh, yep. this one is a somewhat less mocking because uh, it's kind of interesting that the, the Mississippi was real muddy and the Ohio was much clearer and as the uh, Ohio flowed into the Mississippi for a long period, there'd be like two rivers side by side. Um, one side clear and the other side muddied until the waters got all mixed up again. Okay, let's get some boats on. And uh, we're going to start with one. And then when it gets down to the other end, we'll probably... Uh, we'll uh, create a... Uh, when it gets down close to Memphis, we'll put a second boat on. Cause I, uh, I don't know if it really will support two. And uh, I've recently learned that frequency doesn't matter so much. So having a second boat just to increase the frequency isn't gonna make a difference. It's really the time. I'm name this line, passenger ferry. St. Louis, Cape Girardeau, Memphis. And let's see, it's I'm sure we don't have anybody coming down yet, but so we probably won't pick anybody up from St. Louis. Oh, no, this is you know, this is something very interesting. I don't think I've commented on this yet, but if you'll recall, when we built this tram line down here to uh, the harbor, it was just this long line and then this road here. And what the game has done is it's created connecting roads there and here and here, and is now building out along uh, this this tram tram line. So interesting to see how that developed. 
unfortunately, this tram line is full down here. So I, and we have a bunch of uh, trams, vehicles already on here, but I'm gonna put another, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and put two more. Thing is, I want them to move those people around very quickly. I don't care if they're not always running full, but in this case, they are running full. And uh, look here, we've already got some Oh, that's interesting. Somebody's getting on this bus stop at the ferry to go to uh, this stop in the middle of town. Okay. Let's see what we have for destinations now. How about Memphis? Twenty-one, twenty-two. 98% usage, so we're going to have some folks heading down. And uh, here in Memphis, we have 18 and 21 who want to go to Cape Girardeau. How many want to go to St. Louis? Only eight. Hmm. wonder if that's a function of the distance and the time the trip will take. Kind of expected more. I wonder how that's playing out in St. Louis so far. Well, we do have one passenger wanting to head down to uh, Memphis. Ha! So St. Louis destinations, Cape Girardeau, only 9% late line usage. So we still have people mostly driving on their own. Um, and then down to Memphis, 15. So, so far anyway, we're not having a significant uptick in uh, passengers, but we'll see how, how it all plays out. We do have people starting to use the boat here. Okay. Um, so I think we should start thinking about what we want to do on the Ohio here. And we, we need to do both a cargo line and a passenger line. I think what we'll do is we'll start with the passenger line. But I think we're going to leave that to the next episode. I'm going to try to keep these episodes a little shorter. I've been all over the place in terms of the, the length, but I think people might find it more enjoyable to, to sit down for a shorter period of time. So I'm going to say goodbye here. We'll take a ride on our our new uh, our new passenger ferry going down to Cape Girardeau. <laughs> you know, one of the funny things too is you see these boats doing all of this uh, twisting and turning as they're going down the river and that's actually not too far off from real life. The uh, the, the steamboats, when they travel up and down the Mississippi, they tended to stay in the middle of the river when they're heading down river and catch uh, closer into shore when they were heading back up where the current was less. The, um, there were so many uh, different bars and snags and banks and islands that they would often have to cross back and forth from either side of the river. And and there were lots of what they called crossings where they did that. So anyway, thanks for joining me and uh, I'll see you again soon.